Have you been painting flowers for a while and feel like things are just kind of meh? I get it, but guess what? You just need to pay more attention to greenery. The flowers get all the attention. They're kind of big drama queens. But what surrounds the flower and how it surrounds the flower can have the biggest impact. In my book, Making Art for Joy's Sake, there's a whole chapter dedicated to filler leaves. That's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about filler clusters. So I'm talking big bunches of eucalyptus and little textury things, but all bound together in a beautiful way, tucked in with our flowers. And oh my gosh, friends, it's going to change everything. Once you're in a comfort zone with these leafy moments, you'll feel a big shift in your floral art and probably even in your landscapes and beyond. Today, I am using core watercolor, spray them down, I'm using a quarter inch dagger brush to keep things simple. I've got my paper towel, I've got my two containers of water and we're ready to rumble. Let's get started with a bunch of eucalyptus. This is called specifically silver dollar eucalyptus and you're gonna see it a lot in trendy floral bouquets and arrangements. And it's basically a bunch of ovals. Some are gonna be more fat and squat, some are gonna be tall and skinny. And with the dagger brush, I'm using two strokes, kind of a, a C and then a backward C and then fill in the middle with some water and blendy blend the two strokes or a different color. Let these ovals bump up against one another. And so the color from one oval starts to bump into another and you're gonna get some cool stuff happening. It's an organic kind of cluster. So you're not gonna have a lot of symmetry. And honestly, in my opinion, I don't think you want symmetry here because you want that organic kind of lopsided effect. You can start to add in some stems with the very tip of your brush. If you're not using a dagger, you're using a round, just light pressure. Honestly, that's true for both brushes, but you're gonna have no problem making these shapes, of course, with a round brush as well. I'm purposely grabbing different greens every time I go to the palette just to keep things interesting. Of course, your color choice is going to depend on your painting and the flower and all that kind of good stuff. But for today, I'm just having fun with the greens. Now, when everything's wet, as it all is still right now, you can go back in with clean water, blendy blend over top. You can dab in different colors if you want to. Just remember your wet page is an opportunity. The thing you wanna think about when you're adding the stems is direction. Every stem should go back to a main point. So you don't wanna have all these different stems kind of leading to all different places. That's gonna look chaotic and it's just not gonna feel put together. But when you have one main stem, and with the eucalyptus, I usually keep even that main stem pretty thin because I don't want it to look too heavy and branchy. You do you though, because truly, eucalyptus is kind of branchy so it's up to you and then all of your supporting stems keep them radiating towards that original main stem before we move on to the next type of cluster let's talk about how we use these larger clusters so you have kind of your classic small textury filler greenery and that's great but if you use the small scale filler everywhere it's gonna just kind of make your composition feel kind of wah, wah, if you know what I mean. So you wanna have these like secondary, larger clusters of greenery that honestly, if done beautifully, which I know they're going to be done beautifully by you, when that happens, those bigger clusters can sometimes even become secondary and tertiary. There I go again with the crazy words, focal points. So that's what I love about these. So for example, if you have a big, beautiful rose, surround it with, maybe one large organic cluster of greenery, and then a few filler flowers, and then a few smaller filler greens. And you're going to have the recipe for an absolutely exquisite composition. Okay, this next one, same kind of idea. Everything's radiating from one point, starting with a leaf, press, drag, and lift at an angle or at a curve really more so. Do that with two leaves and just vary the length of time that you're dragging and how quickly you're lifting. If you lift quicker, you're gonna get a blunt edge to your leaf. And if you lift slower, you're gonna get a nice, beautiful, thin point. Then do some dab and lift, dab and lift in descending size on a curve. Let me slow that down and repeat here. Dab and lift on either side of an invisible center. 
descend the size as you dab and lift and do all of that on a curve and you have the beginnings of a lovely vine or fern gorgeous remember keep it all coming from one central point you can see there on the left where those three big leaves meet everything all the little stems all the little branches are going to radiate from that point the thing here friends is keep it simple this is loose, modern watercolor. We're not getting super heavy into the details. You can always layer on more details as you go and build these little sprays of greenery, but don't feel like you have to get super detailed if you don't want to. Again, I'm grabbing whatever green my instinct takes me to. Some of these marks that I'm making, friends, are just literal dab, short drag, lift quickly. And then up here at the top, left i'm doing some simple press slight drag and lift up to get another kind of greenery this looks kind of eucalyptusy, and i'm literally just using the shape of my brush and a little bit of drag to get these clusters the interest here the real excitement is just changing up the greens and making sure that my filler marks are varied in size. So I've got the big leaves first, we started with those. Then I went in with the vines and that's my medium size. And then I went in with the real small marks for a nice variety through and through. Now something to keep in mind that you don't wanna overwhelm your painting with these clusters of greenery. And trust me, it can be super easy to do that because once you start painting these larger filler clusters, you are going to be obsessed. So just keep in mind, you wanna have a nice balance for your composition of larger floral, medium floral, smaller floral, and the same goes larger greenery clusters, smaller greenery fillers, and then your smallest, tiniest textury moments. Next up, friends, are one of my favorite details to add, and that is tendrils. I, I don't know, again, is that the name of them? But basically thin, wispy, curly, awesome little lines, but we're gonna do these in a larger, more focal cluster. And so the idea here, friends, is to again radiate from one point, as you could imagine, but try out different techniques. Longer swirls with a curl on the end, shorter, more straight marks, very exaggerated curly cues, like the ones that you imagine on a cartoon strawberry plant, right? Little dashy, scratchy marks that could make up a very, very minimal fern-like spray. Or something that looks a little bit like wheat. A little dab of your liner brush. And yes, friends, I am using a liner brush. You could use a really high quality round brush that comes to a beautiful point. But a liner brush is going to really take this technique off the charts for you. Once you have a few swirls painted out, you can start adding little leaves and dashes on the tip of them. The other thing I love to do is cluster those swirls into repeated lines that almost look like waves. Friends, you can imagine all the glorious places that you could use these tendrils. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Now, there is a learning curve on these, friends. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. Keep trying, keep your hand loose. Don't work the movement from your wrist, but your whole arm, and you're gonna get those long, lyrical, gracious shapes that you're after with that liner brush. Okay, friends, let's hash this out in comments. Which one of these techniques, clusters, whatever you wanna call it, are you gonna try first? Friends, if you're having a good time, give this video a boop, that's a like, because that means more people on YouTube are gonna get in on the watercolor fun. Here's a few reasons why these bigger leaf clusters are so important to your composition. Number one, dynamics. Certain shapes suggest movement and energy. So painting in a specific direction from a specific point in your painting gives your composition movement and energy. And who doesn't want that? Another reason, simplicity versus complexity. These bigger clusters of greenery give you an opportunity to vary the amount of detail in your work in a beautiful and imaginative way. Another reason, 
Layering of various shapes is so important in your composition. Larger shapes, we talked about it earlier, medium sized shapes, and then your smallest details. So these clusters give you that opportunity in a really authentic way to include a variety of shapes throughout your composition. And then evolution of opacity. Now this is something we haven't talked a lot about on this channel. I use watercolor in a way that really varies the level of sheerness that you're gonna see in a pigment. Layering these clusters of greenery in different color families gives you the opportunity to really mess around with the opacity of traditional watercolors, which I love. And the bottom line, friends, vibing with these skills will improve your composition overall because it's no longer just about the flowers and the pressure's off a little bit. You get to spread your lovely skills out, flowers, greenery, and you're going to be a better watercolorist for it. So friends, now you're ready to add simple filler flowers to your greenery clusters. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what you create. Watch this one next.